I look at them and I think of like Kate Spade. So yeah, I think this is a better under the radar classic option. One of the coolest bags to get, bags that like people can't quite put their finger on where it's from, but they know that it's expensive. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Jess. If you love shopping and handbag videos, please like and subscribe to my channel, ring my bell. I'm trying to reach my goal of 10,000 subs. All your help would be amazing. I wanted to talk about bags that I thought would be a good alternative to some of the popular bags that we're seeing lately. I know that there is a trend to go for more under the radar if you know you know bags and I thought I'd talk about some brands today that not everybody knows about but I feel like you know very well made been around for a long time and could be alternatives to uh, say more known brands like Louis Vuitton and that sort of thing. Recently guys we've had the Louis Vuitton Kusama collection. There were a lot of very detailed Capucines bags that went for over 10,000 Australian dollars. Particularly there's this Capucines MM in white leather with these painted spots on it. For such like a crazy bag it's $11,800 and the spots are a kind of just like paint splodge on the bag. I thought a good alternative to this bag, although it is an artistic collaboration, so I guess it would hold value in that way, but I think at this price point, it's not really like an investment bag. I would prefer personally to go for the Velextra Eastside Crossbody Micro Bag. I really love the colour palette of this Velextra bag. I think it's very interesting to look at. It also doesn't have any big logos on it. Now, I believe the brand Velextra has been around since the 1930s and they're very well known for their well-crafted leather bags and this particular style I believe is one of their most popular designs and I have seen it offered in a lot of interesting uh, patterns and just you can get plain colors as well but I particularly liked this colorway and I think the thing that makes this better than the Louis Vuitton one is that they've actually stitched on these individual shapes onto the bag and I just feel like um, the price being 5300 Australian dollars is a lot more friendly than the Capucines. Now this is a micro bag and it's a little bit smaller but I think in this funky design it really works. It also comes in another colorway as well which is also really nice and a lot of you guys also uh, suggested Velextra. Um, I actually asked on my Instagram which is underscore Jessie style if you had any under the radar bags on your wish list for 2023 and a few of you guys said that you really like Velextra. Definitely not a brand that I've owned before but I have heard good things and if you want a Velextra bag secondhand they actually could go for really good deals so yeah I think Velextra could be a really nice under the radar brand to look at. Next up again from Louis Vuitton the new Tilsit bag, it could be quite popular. Now it comes in the brown monogram canvas and the bottom of the bag is like this kind of like rocking horse shape. And I feel like it's a very casual bag due to the monogram canvas. I think a similar vibe of this bag could be as an alternative, the Delvo mini pin bucket in Suplique in <laughs> Torion soft leather. Now, yes, this bag does look very different from the Tilsit, apart from it has a similar rounded bottom to the bag, and it's in this beautiful grained brown leather. I think that investing in like brown like kind of leather bag could be really neutral for your wardrobe. I also think that the branding on this bag is not as in your face as the Louis Vuitton monogram, but you can still recognize it as Delvo because of that D on the front. It it's still very casual. It doesn't have like as much of a closure as the Tilsit bag, but I personally pre would prefer to get this Delvo bag because I think it's a little bit less overpowering on your outfit because it's just a neutral color. And I particularly love the contrasting white stitching. I think that looks very expensive. I think you're getting a little bit more bag for your buck and you're also getting a brand that is very highly uh, regarded in luxury fashion and leather handbags so I would personally prefer to go for this Delvo bag and you know this is all my own opinion but yeah I guess uh, this is what I would choose to buy over some of these more popular bags that you're seeing coming out. Uh, the Saint Laurent Eye Care bag or Icar bag 
has been super popular on YouTube and Instagram and it's this oversized maxi bag uh, with a big um, YSL logo. I personally have tried it on before and I wasn't a huge fan of it. I would rather go for an under the radar bag like the Todd's Tea Timeless Hobo Bag in leather medium size. Now I actually visited Todd's the other day and I was quite blown away by their uh, quality of leather in their handbags. They actually feel really beautifully crafted. The hardware is amazing. And Todd's bags, I think because they don't have heaps of marketing, they're priced extremely like well, guys. For the bags, I don't understand how the bags are that price because they are really good prices for the luxury market. And Todd's is a brand that isn't as highly recognized, I think, as like Chanel and Louis Vuitton. But I think they make very classic, timeless styles. In the past I would have thought that this was a little bit dated but I can see the hobo bag coming back in fashion and I think this option is a really chic one to go for. If you want so if you want to go for a hobo style but you don't want to get something too trendy, I definitely think that the Celeron Icar bag is a little bit on the trendy side and I personally would prefer to go for this Todd's bag because it is a really good price, 2600 Australian dollars compared to the Icar bag at 6000 $500 and yes the Icar is uh I don't know if I'm saying it right but I think it's Icar is a lot more oversized but I actually think that the uh, size of the Tea Timeless Hobo is a little bit more useful it's not as like crazy big um and, and it will still fit all your daily needs and it does also come with a pouch similar to the Icar bag and it is just a fraction of the price. I also think the logo on it is a little bit more classy, a little bit less crazy and in your face and the leather on it looks incredible. It's this beautiful grained leather, it has feet. So yeah, I think this is a better under the radar classic option and you'll get more value for your money compared to the YSL bag. I absolutely love the Mini Kelly by Hermes, but that bag is probably a nightmare to get in the store. You'd have to spend, you know, you have to buy some diamonds or a few coats and watches to get off with that bag. Or you can go on the pre-love market and pay $40,000 for a black Mini Kelly. I think a good alternative to the Mini Kelly, that, uh, not a dupe guys, don't get a dupe. Go for a nicely made bag. I don't know. I'm kind of like thinking now, like, there are so many beautiful brands to discover. And even going for like a vintage bag, like I bought a Ferragamo vintage bag, only a few hundred dollars. And I've been kind of using this in a similar way as like a mini Kelly. But I think a good alternative if you're not into vintage is definitely the new Ferragamo iconic top handle in this other shape. It's kind of a more like squashed down shape of the original icon bag. And I love how it has like the exaggerated handle. This makes it a lot easier to use than the Mini Kelly because you can actually scoop it under your arm. Not only that, but the Mini Kelly fits hardly anything, guys. Like, it is so, so small. And this Ferragamo bag in this size will fit a lot more than the Mini Kelly, but still has these, like, tiny proportions to it. Um, it is also a really good price compared to the Mini Kelly at $3,390. Um, it's also a bag that's been out for, you know, a few decades, so it's not, like, a trendy style. I definitely think it is something that you could have in your wardrobe for many years to come. And from what I've seen, Ferragamo quality is also incredible. It's definitely going to become more popular because they do have a new creative director and I have seen a lot more people notice Ferragamo. So I think this bag is a good one to go for instead of buying a Mini Kelly. Because although people say Mini Kelly is a great investment, I think buying it secondhand, it, you're just going to be paying way too much. If you get offered it in the store, then yeah, I'll of course buy it. But this is a really good option if you want a Mini Kelly and you still want to design a bag. I think this is a really, it's actually more practical than a Mini Kelly and you're still getting that kind of aesthetic. Uh, finally, guys, a lot of you suggested on my Instagram Lorna bags. And I like how with Lorna bags, you can cut customize them, you can choose your own colors, and you can kind of get a special order. And Lorna is a bag that was actually very highly loved by Queen Elizabeth. Well, I don't know guys, I want to offer an alternative to the Lorna bag because I, I kind of like the idea with Lorna, how you can customize your own bags. But the actual look of the bags to me, I don't know, they just, they're not completely my favorite. I think to me they look a little bit like 
I don't know, I look at them and I think of like Kate Spade. I don't know why, I'm sure the craftsmanship is a lot better than Kate Spade, but I, I don't know, I think they're very... Oh, they're, they're too like ladylike, very kind of like prim and proper, similar to like a Lady Dior. Um, I don't know. I know they're similar to a Kelly bag, but I feel like a Kelly bag has a little bit more like personality to it. But these bags are very like posh and I just don't know. So I'm going to say it, instead of going for a Lorna bag, I personally would go for the Joseph Duclos Fontielli bag, which is a new bag, I, and I'm not saying that right, but it's actually a new bag by Joseph Duclos, and it's also a top handle, definitely a little bit of a different vibe from the Lorna top handle bags, but I love this bag because it is handmade, uh, made of this beautiful grainy leather, really elegant, and it's a full grain calf skin um, with the iconic wax seal clasp. Um, it's fully leather lined, um, has this beautiful, natural, pleasant feel. I think this bag would be a lot more versatile and would look a lot more kind of cooler than the Lorna bag. The Lorna bag looks a little bit too princessy to me. Like, I don't know, I would personally go for the Joseph Duclos vibe myself because Lorna bags aren't cheap. Like, they're still quite expensive and Joseph Duclos, I've heard, is incredible quality. Um, and if I went to Paris one day, I would definitely go check out their store. They also have a bag which is probably their most popular bag called the Diane bag, which, oh my gosh, that bag is breathtaking. But I just thought I would talk about the uh, font... Fontielli bag today because it's actually a new style and I think the price is it's expensive but for what you get for a luxury bag I think it's quite reasonable and it's a style that you will just have forever it's very practical uh yeah just a beautifully crafted bag so I think this is like a bag um you could get look very you know, chic, uh, under the radar, and people will be asking you definitely where you got your bag from. And yeah, I think that's the, they're the coolest bags to get. Bags that like people can't quite put their finger on where it's from, but they know that it's expensive. I think they are like, make you look the most stylish. So anyways, guys, thanks for listening to my uh, video today. Let me know, are there any under the radar bags on your wish list? or any brand that I should look into and research for myself, uh, let me know. And uh, thanks for watching again, and I'll talk to you guys on my next one. Bye!